Hi, everyone. Welcome. Please say hi if you can hear me. Okay, I think Phoebe raised her hand, so I'm guessing she can can all hear me. So I'm just going to wait for five minutes for other people to join. But welcome, everyone. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm just going to bring in um a blessing. In my blessing, can you hear me? Um, yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm seeing myself like five times, <laughs> but that that's a. <laughs> 
Um, okay, I think in a minute we can get started. All right. Another thing, I could I can't see people in the call. Hmm. Yes. So you go to attendees. Oh, I don't think you can have access to that, but it's on the attendees. Well, um, everyone, you can introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you're joining from. In the meantime, before we get started. Maybe I could go first. Okay, another thing, chat is disabled. Did you see that on your end? Oh, I think I, I have I have done a very good job with scheduling this Zoom webinar. <laughs> so I know I, right. I did a very good job. So let me let me try to uh, let me try to enable chat. Now I don't even know how to use Zoom anymore. Hmm. Um Okay, is it on now? Check in. <laughs> is chat is is it available to everybody now? Is the chat available to everyone? Uh not to me. Not to you. And I'm guessing the same thing for every other person. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Um, I don't. I don't think they can still is see the chat. What is happening? I'm so sorry. Um, no. But I can. I. I made it to everyone. Chat's not still available. I feel like they can only use the Q and A section. Not the chat, right? Exactly. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, let me try to see. Uh okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can check the settings. Sorry for the. Um, uh, let me just check the settings. All right, everyone. Good afternoon. Why Ruth is trying to figure out what, how to open up the chat for us to use. So um, uh, I think we still, we still need the chat because a lot of us will be having questions, right? And. We'll be needing the chat to ask our questions, or we could still use the Q and A session. I could see some people already using that to communicate, right? So yeah, we could use that. So, but um, welcome to Chaos Africa Open Source Series, and this this is the first episode, uh, and we will be having more episodes coming up, right? And um, for today's episode, we will be looking at getting started with open source software, OSS. And our facilitator for this session is Ruti Kega. Um, Ruti Kega is the community manager at Chaos Africa, and she's a GitHub star. And um, so, hi Ruth, I will be able to figure out the chat each. Not yeah. yet, right? Yeah, not yet. So we can still be doing introductions. Just talk about Chaos Africa. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure that because I really do need the chat and I don't know how. Yeah. I... Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um so about Chaos Africa. Chaos Africa is um 
is the chapter or is one of the chapters of the chaos projects and um we we um we do not do things independently. We just amplify the works we do at the Chaos Project, right? So you don't get it confused or twisted. So, um, hmm. so yeah, I mean, amplifying the things we do at Chaos Project or at Chaos Project, pretty much, um, you know, working on all the projects and um, initiatives that we do have in the general Chaos Project, right? So again, that's just the Africa chapter. And um, we are we started this series because we um, we saw the need for um, Africans to get into open source because um, for Ruth um, specifically, I think she um, I, I'm I'm guessing almost every day or every week that goes by, she probably gets one person asking her about open source. And on my end, I've also um, had people continuously asking me about open source. And um, we felt like there is a need to actually um, bridge that gap. So um, we want to use this series to educate everyone, every African on what open source is, how to contribute to open source, how to even create your own open source project, and pretty much everything um, about open source, anything at all you need to know, right? So you could ask questions, um, yeah, and we will be providing you with answers to those questions. Um, Ruth, am I doing a good job? <laughs> yeah, you're doing awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, so. Huh. I think we should not figure this out. I don't think we are going to be able to use chat. Is it enabled here? Yeah, uh, because we are okay. panelists. Hold on, everyone. Does it work you now? Okay, if it works on your end, could you just say hello in the chat? I saw a button and I toggled that button, so it should work. Okay. Um. I don't think okay. it still works. Not, exactly, because you're not seeing any hello coming in. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't still work. I'm so sorry. I think we are going to have to go without the chat today. And yeah. uh, but the Q and A is there, so if you have yeah, questions, you can use, you can use that. So you can yes. use the Q and A for for today. I'm so sorry about this, and That's I fine. don't want you to disorganize the talk we have today. So thank you very much, Mary Blessing, for um, introducing and welcome everybody um, to our first webinar. Like uh, Mary Blessing said, um, you know why we why we thought about this um, series is to help a lot of people, even in Chaos Africa, understand how to contribute to open source, what it means to contribute to open source, because we do get a lot of people that come in and, you know, they are not really familiar with the open source terms, they're not really familiar with what open source is about and how they can even participate or contribute. So that's why we thought about this series idea and we're starting with the first topic, which is getting started uh, with open source. So um, the chat is disabled for some reason. I did a very good job with organizing the webinar and I forgot to enable chat. So you can use the Q&A session if you have, uh, you know, you can tell me where you're joining from and, um, you know, if you have any question at all. So let's just get started. Let me share my screen in a sec. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing I'm going you're going to see is just me trying to navigate where Zoom chat enable webinar is. You know, we can all see that. But let me just go to the next thing. <laughs> um hi meeting control. So um, like I said, we'll talk about um, you know, what it means to contribute to open source and generally can everyone see this? Um, your blessing, you're going to be my eyes and nose, literally. Yep, um, I can. Okay, good. Yeah, can. So, um, so the, the 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 essence of this session, and it's going to be um, interactive, 
right, um, I would find a way to um, work with the, the Q&A to get when people are having issues. So I hope everybody here has a GitHub account. That's just the basic thing you need to participate in this session, just a GitHub account. Um, so if you do not have a GitHub account, go and open one immediately. It takes like two minutes. So yeah, so um, my name is Ruth. I am, you know, the I am the community lead. I'm the one that um, handles community at Chaos Africa, and I also do a lot of open source work. Um, you can find me at Ikega Ruth, and I'm also a GitHub star. I won't draw much on introductions. So basically, in this session, you would learn what and um, why you should contribute to open source, and hopefully, you also make your own first contribution um, to open source. And you're going to see, like, depending, we are going to do it in such a way that it doesn't really matter if you're, if you are a developer or not, you can still contribute, like, you can still use GitHub to contribute. So, so far, you have, like, a GitHub account. So you should um, get, get started with opening that already. So what's, what's when you hear um, open source software, I'm going to kind of, like, Break it, break it down into different parts. Um, open source is like when you hear open source software, it refers to um, software that the code, the code base, right? Um, so you have software and software is usually made up of code, right? And it's built with code, right? So the code base, that's what I refer to as um, publicly, like the, the code base is publicly available. In the sense that you're able to you're able to see how it was made, right? You're able to see what lines of code this whole software has, what components that it has. You're able to assess and see every single thing from the first commit, the day of the first commit, to the recent commit. So that's what one of the things that that defines um, software that is open source. Then another keyword is, um, you know, it has, you have the permission to make edits or um, make alterations to this code or to this software. That's another, um, th that's another thing that defines open source software. You have the ability, you have um, the permission to contribute to it, to um, fix bugs, to make enhancements, to also redistribute the software. So um, using the Q&A chat um, and my blessing, you're going to be my eyes again. Um, how many people have used um, like Linux? If you, used, if you use Linux, you should understand what I, when I say redistributions, um, you know, with the, the Linux operating system, you have like different, different, um, different OS, um, different um, distros, you have Ubuntu, you have Fedora, there are a lot of them. So um, Linux itself is an open source software in comparison to another um, operating system that is that a lot of people use, which is like Windows, like a lot of people use Windows, right? Um, so Windows is proprietary, it's not free. You can't even like for Windows, it's just crack versions that are available. The software itself is not actually free. So um, Windows is a proprietary software in comparison to Linux operating system, which is open source. Um, so that, that's what basically defines like an open source software. If that software, if the code base is not publicly available, it's not open source. And there are a lot of times that people that people talk about, like people mistake open source to mean that the software is free. Now, um, there's another thing that I would love you to understand, which is um, there's what you call free and open source software, right? And there are open source software that are also paid for, right? So sometimes you'd see um, acronyms like FOSS, F-O-S-S, -S, which means um, that software is, that software is um is free, like it's both publicly available and it's free to use. But there are sometimes the software, um, I, I think the term that they coin around paid open source software is called um, commercial open source software, that's COSS. So if you Google search that, you see that there are some open source software that are, they have like 
paid tiers, like it's not totally free. So the free in open source, like what the free in open source means is not in terms of money, but it's in terms of freedom to use it, to use the software as you wish. So um, I, I think one thing I really love people to take from this session is that all open source software is not free, right? It's, it can be paid as well. The freedom there means, it doesn't mean the, the usual phrase that they say is freedom is not free as in fair, but free as in freedom, right? So that's what the free in open source means. Right? So um, that is the definition, right? And some one other thing that defines open source, it needs to have a license. So that's another thing as well. The license kind of helps people understand how they can use the software. If you, if you check popular open source projects on GitHub, you'd always see a license attached to it. And the popular ones you see are MIT license, right? So, um, and I'll show you in a couple of minutes. But let's go into why should you contribute to open source and of what, why, I think I'm, I'm going to um, combine this particular, particular section because we need to go into like practice, um, I'm going to combine this particular section into why and who can contribute. So why should you contribute to open source? Um, first, why not? But um, why? what are the benefits to you as a technical person? Or can, can you all still hear me? I use MTN, so like I have to keep saying that. Like if my yes. person can hear me, I think everybody else can hear me. Um, yes. And can you can use and you just confirm that you can hear me. Um, but yeah, so, right, um, like I said, why should you contribute to open source or how does it help your, your technical career? How does it kind of help you as, a, as an individual? First, as a, you know, in, as a tech person or somebody in tech or even non-technical, right, even though you're not even in tech, um, it, it kind of improves your, your, your skill sets, both um, your technical skill sets and even soft soft skill set before let me say like three years back bringing myself into like as an example i i i'm not i'm not i didn't have a lot of um a lot of confidence to do public speaking maybe i could do it with a small group of people but i couldn't do it like you know with a larger crowd but and even handling or leading a community is not something I would have thought of, right? So um, when you when you contribute to open source, you're working in a community, you're working in a project. And the way open source works is you do not just bring your code and you just submit it and nobody looks at it. There's a review process that goes on. So people, there are people called maybe the maintainers, um, and maintainers here mean, if you're not, if you're not head of the word maintainers, maintainers are people that are maybe the code owners or the software owners or people guarding the repository or this or the code base. So those are what they call maintainers, right? So um why how it kind of helps you is that when when you submit a pull request or when you submit a change that maintainer goes through your code. And if, imagine somebody with a higher experience level than you are going through what you're doing. Sometimes it can be intimidating, yes, but it helps you grow your skill, right? That's one part of improving your skill set. You, you get to learn a lot of things, um, you know, from people, different people, and you get to collaborate with people. Um, bringing this event together, I was not just, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring this event together. It's, it's, it's effort from a lot of people that are not speaking here today, right? There was somebody that designed the flyers. There's somebody that handles the social media accounts. Mary Blessing is also here trying to, like, she's also facilitating the session. So a lot of things go on. You get to collaborate and work with a lot of people, right? You get to network with people. You get to meet people. You learn about other people's culture because then open source, it's it's um, sometimes a lot of projects are global, so you get to work with different people with different skill sets, and you learn, you expand your um, your your portfolio a lot. Um, another part is um, there are also like paid opportunities with open source in sense of internships. Um, I know a couple of people might have heard of outreach, Google Summer of Code, Google Season of Docs, and all the other programs. So that's like another reason. 
right? Why you should contribute to open source. And then who can contribute? Anybody can, whether you're a designer, you're a technical writer, you're a developer, whatsoever um, stack you're in, you can contribute to open source. I can see some people raising their hands um, out, out uh, when, when we get to the practice, practice session out, kind of like bring some people up to ask questions, um, but just hold on a sec. Um, then, like I said, anybody can. The thing you just have to think about is when you join a community is, I am a designer, right? Or I am a technical writer. What are the gaps that this community needs that I can fill in? Or I am a QA person. I am, I am a content marketer. I am an event organizer. Like, how do I help this community? Because there are a lot of times where projects that you can you join might not have a way for you to contribute, but they actually do need your help but they just do not have it listed out. So sometimes you have to bring it a step further, bring it a step further and kind of like volunteer your help, um, ask, ask about things that you can do, activities that you can get involved in and how you can help the project. Referencing back to what I said about like different people came together to bring, um, organize this event. There are people that designed the flyers. There are people that just tweeted out the events, right? So that's like telling you that in, they are different that there are so many kind of contributions you can make to open source so like i said we are going to just do a very quick practice and all you just need is a github account so i'm just going to go back to our chats um okay i wish i wish this chat was on but i'm just going to go back to our uh, chats. Um, I, I saw some somebody did raise their hand, but I don't know who did. Um, so I'm just going to go back uh, while I guess shared the okay, that was David. Just trying to okay. Um let me see. I'm going to share the link. I don't know how I'm going to paste this without using the chat. I'm going to share the link of the GitHub repo that we are using um, to make the contributions, first contributions. So this is the link. How do I share this link? Okay, this is the link. Yeah, we are going to do the contribution now, Angel. So this is the link that we are going to use to make the contribution. So it's everyone on this link right now as long as you have a github account you can just follow through it's going to be very easy because we are going to use um a github feature called code spaces so it's going to be relatively easy um i'm going to stop sharing a second while i bring up david if he wants to speak So that's the link in somebody raised their hand, which was David. Okay, yeah. Hello, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to ask a question. Actually, um, maybe it's too forward, but um, so um, so speaking of um, open source, uh, does identify like issues like with a project? Uh, Am I the only one? I also count as a contribution. Yeah, it's voice is breaking. Oh, hi, David. Hello. Your voice. Um, yeah. I think it's better now. You, you, you can go on. It's better now. Yes, please. 
Okay. Um, so what I was asking is that like does identifying issues with um, a particular project, just identifying issues with a project and stating them, does it count as contribution? So okay, like reporting, maybe I'll say reporting bugs. Is that what you mean? I think. I also did not get that question. Yeah, so um, David, I think you can put it in charts. We just need to get started with the contribution. And for people that just joined, um, when I set the webinar up, so this is a webinar and usually you're not allowed to speak or the chat is supposed to be enabled. And for some reason, I did a good job and I did set it up well. So chats are disabled and I didn't want to spend so much time. So sorry about that. So you can communicate through the Q&A. But I'm just going to ask with the link I dropped, has, is everybody on the repository now? So that's the link. Okay, yes, I'm seeing a lot of people saying yes. So if you're on the repository, okay. Let me share my screen back and then we get started. Okay, so I think there should be a way to get people to, let me see. There should be a way to get people to talk. So I'm just going to allow everybody to talk. Let me just do that. I don't know how many people you can allow to talk at the time oh, let me try to do that because i want it to be i'm just so david has a in the chat uh, um, He's asking if, you know, I think opening an issue on a project on GitHub, if it counts as an open source um, contribution. Yes, it does. Like, um, it, it usually they, the, the term they use to, um, you know, that term is called like bug reporting. They usually call it bug reporting, like um, seeing bugs in the repository and kind of like reporting them. Yes, also a contribution because if you, if you don't, and usually other people can also pick that bug up. Like once you, there's sometimes when you open an issue, you're not able to solve it, someone else picks it up. So yeah, it counts as a contribution, right? So. So I've been trying to bring some people up. Um, May bless now you're also permitted to do that. If you uh, have all. permission. You can't? Yeah. Yeah. I really, I really... So I have bringing up people to talk so that they can participate in the in the practice session. You know why? I think we we can't use webinars next time. Because Yeah, I think we have brought up sufficient people. Okay, please, when you come up, you can just mute yourself until like it's, there's a need for you to unmute your okay. Um. So maybe blessing, can you try again if you can do it? Yes, yeah, sure. Try to see if you can permit people to talk. I've made you co-host. Yay, I have superpowers now. I can. <laughs> Great. So um, I'm just going to paste the link again and go to the repository. So 
if you're there, you can raise your hand or like just indicate. So. I'll say something if you're not there. Okay, good. Eight people are raising their hands up, so they are there. Okay, so when you're here, um, the first thing I would love you to do is click on code. So basically, first contributions, let me just give an intro on what first contributions is. This is one of the couple, the most popular. If you can see the stats here, it's just like people have started a lot. So it just helps beginners make their first contribution to open source, right? And basically what all you have to do is add your name on the contributors.md file. Um, if you're not familiar with GitHub, just follow, follow what I have to say very well. Um, so when you jump into an open source project, the first thing you want to do is re read about the project. Um, because I, I, a lot of times people make that mistake of getting into a project and just wanting to go to the issues tab and look for issues to contribute to. You don't even know like, what does the project do or how can I help? And you're just jumping in. Sometimes it's very, it's, it's, it's not really a good practice. So the first thing you do when you see a get repository is you want to check out the readme. A readme file is something that um, details what the project is about. Like it says readme, so you have to actually read it. Right, so it kind of details what what is this project about? What do they do? What is the the software is ab about? How can I join the community? A lot of things, and it also sometimes details how you can contribute to the repository. But sometimes there's also like a file called contributing.md, which is a separate file that this does not have because it's already on the README page on how you can contribute to this project. So basically what we are going to be doing is adding our names. I've added my name to this file like three times. So they're going to ban me soon. But this is what I used to practice a lot for when I talk to like new contributors in open source. So basically you're just going to add your name. You can see somebody added their name 42 minutes ago. It's one of the most active projects on GitHub. It helps beginners contribute. So like I said, what we are going to do is add our names here. Now, there's a feature called GitHub Code Spaces that's going to help us do this without doing it on our local system. That's why I said it's quite friendly for people that don't even write code. So you just have to follow through with using Code Spaces. Code Spaces is awesome. And I'm sure everybody should have access to Code Spaces. It's now publicly available. Um, so um, all we are going to do is initially, if we didn't have Code Spaces, we would have been you know, doing this on our local machine. But because there's Code Spaces, we're not going to be following through with forking the project in our um, local rep in our own instance. Um, rather, in, we are not going to be cloning the project in our local machine. So the first step is forking the repository. Now, what this means is, um, if you go back to the definition of open source, I said you can redistribute the software as your own, right? So for you to contribute to an open source project, you need to create your own copy. Like you need to create your own copy. People that um, use GitHub a lot will understand this term, but I'm just trying to explain it better for people that are not familiar with GitHub terms. Um, but yeah, so forking the repository means making the copy as your own. So can everybody just click on this part? Fork and make a fork. Have everyone clicked? Oh, I already have a fork. Oh my God. See, that's why I said I've contributed so much to this thing. That um, if you have, just raise your hand. If you have made your own fork, just raise your hand. I'm just going to make it in chaos because I can't. <laughs> okay. So we have created, I'm using an organization account because I can. So um, use your own personal account because I already have one. I'm just, if, you've, if you're having issues with forking it, just indicate as well. I think everybody should have um, talk permissions now, right? So you can say something if you have not made yours.
you don't have to name it though you just have to fork like just make it fork that's like making a fork is just what you need to do and you just you don't have to rename it Yes, there will be a recording of this posted. And I'm so shy of having this recording posted because I really messed up a lot. But that's fine. Happens. Um, Bright, you raised your hand. Um, you can go ahead and Angel, you raise your hand as well. Um, Bright, do you want to say something? And unmute yourself and see what you want to see. Oh, I, I think I told people to raise their hands when they do something, right? And I forgot. Right. Okay, that's fine. I think probably you have your hand raised from then. So has, has everyone created a fork? Um okay. Raise your hand if you have created yep. a fork. Yep, created. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so um, like I said, you have to, you have to look at the readme, right? Follow through with the instructions. Initially, if we didn't have, um, cloning the repository means like downloading it to your local system, but we are going to be skipping that step and just going to use code spaces. I'm going to show you how GitHub code spaces work. Um, and then, you know, you see how stressful it is to put into your local system. You have to run a Git clone. You need Git installed. And we are going to skip to this step of creating a branch. So, but first let's, um, let's create that code spaces. Let's run it. So click on code. Does everybody have this code spaces tab here? I think I need to increase my... Does everyone have this code spaces here? Yep, yep. Okay, so click on create code space on main. So um, while this is spinning up, what GitHub code spaces is, is your local, a local dev environment on the cloud. So that's, you, you can see it looks like VS code. For people that use VS code, it looks a lot like VS code. So you can, um, edit you can write code on the cloud without having to use your local system so that's what basically github code spaces it spins up like um, a development environment for you and you can do all your stuff so start using code spaces spaces from today so is everyone here let me increase this again because this is so small okay um right if you're on this page, if you have it spinned up, your code space open, just raise your hand. Okay. I see something very weird. I may bless and correct me if I'm wrong. I see my name asking a question. Yo, yo, <laughs> see, I have been screaming here. <laughs> Your name has been like, I've seen eight of it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I think sometimes what happens is the link you shared, maybe at some point you shared the personal link to some persons. Oh, yeah, so when they join it, they really? automatically takes up your name. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> like, it was so scary. I was like, I might be replicated somewhere. Okay, I see. I see. All right, Ruth is everywhere. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so how many people are here? <laughs> this is so funny. Um, okay, how many people are on this sport now? Mine is still showing. Okay, if it's still showing setting up code spaces, it might be a network though, because this takes like a lot of um, I don't know, like a lot of bandwidth to spin up the code space so if you're here you join us later but yeah so i think i think some people have raised their hands oh god this is so funny <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> um okay uh hide meeting float controls yeah 
Okay, so if you've gotten here, congratulations, you're the code space. Um, so let's go back to the instructions. Um, okay, yeah, so we are at create your branch. So the first command you want to run is CD first contributions. Now for, for um, what CD means, if you're not familiar with, uh, if you're not a developer and you're not familiar with commands, CD means change directory, so like change folder. Um, so you come here, you come to your terminal. Um, initially, um, you, you, you can see that it's on, the folder structure is on first contribution. So we want to CD to, oh yeah, this is if you were on your local machine, we are already on first contributions right, CD to first contribution. If you were if you're doing this on your local machine, like if you downloaded the repository, you needed to, um, change, you need to change directory to first contribution, but we're already there, right? Because we created code spaces, we used code spaces. So um, the next is switch to your own branch name. Now, um, when you're contributing to a project, and this is for, maybe we'll have a separate ses session on, using Git and GitHub or using GitHub entirely. So we don't waste all the time trying to explain some things in GitHub. But basically what this means is you're creating a new branch. It, branches in GitHub helps you experiment on your changes before you decide to um, send that change to um, the maintainer or to the main project. So we are just going to use this command. You can you can copy it. You don't have to like memorize this. Um, so your new branch name, just add, just add your name there. You don't have to say your new branch name. You can just say Ruth or um, Ruth or something. It's been so long that I use Git. God help me that I don't embarrass myself public. Um, Git switch. Is everybody here? Sorry, I just forgot that people are fooling along with me. If you're here, raise your hand. This, this yep. feels like class. I feel like a lecturer. Okay, let's go. I hope I don't embarrass myself with git. Um, git switch dash C. Great branch, but I've not created a branch. What the hell is this? Okay, so this is all you have to do. I forgot not to use course words. Um, this is all you have to do. So, like I said, just name a branch. You can say um, your name and dash branch. But there are lots of roots here, so you can you can use my own name too. So for the roots that the people that joined us roots you can use roots too. Um, if you're if you've done the switch branch, you can raise your hand too. You see this? Okay, great, great, great. Ten people are following. Okay, is there anybody that is not following? Maybe that's when you can check the Q and A in case we need to help somebody. Okay, um, so now um that you switch to your own branch, now you you can now go like I said. What all we are doing is adding our name to contributors.md file. So you can now go and add your beautiful name to contributors.md. Um, so let's go back to you open this file this is the file you're opening contributors.md and please add your name in the middle don't add your name at the start or the end i think there's it screws down so usually there's an alphabet alphabetical order but a lot of people have not been following it or maybe they changed their so just go to any middle and add your name dash I knew if I search like Ruti Kega on this thing, I'll see like a lot of them. I've done, I've added my name here a lot. So who is at this point of adding their name? Please raise your hand. Okay, so just um, add your name. People that are familiar with Markdown syntax um, to make a, a link is this. So just look for your, maybe your, your GitHub ID, your GitHub profile. So let me just open this on a new link. Why is it not being on a new link? 
Смотри, вон нас там здесь. Видите? Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to copy this thing. So copy your profile link, come place in there. Um, so I'm going to paste this. Um, have everyone done this? So if you've added your name, just raise your hand. Six people have added their names. Seven, so I think some people are still following. Okay. Nobody's lost. If you're lost, you can say something that you're lost and we'll find you. Okay. Yeah, Nobody. I think someone is actually. <laughs> okay, she says she's lost actually. Where, where did you pick you up from? Uh, hi. Okay, she can actually unmute your mic and say something. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. So um, I had issues with um, forking initially, so that took me a while mm -hmm. because I forgot my password. So I missed out how you got into code spaces. And thank you. Yeah. So let me let me just take it back a bit. So when you when you fork the repository, you click on this code, right, and you'd see something like create code space on main because I already have one running. That's why. So you see, did you see anything like create code space on main? Yes. Yeah, so just click on that. It will now spin up that code space for you. Do you have that? Mm, just continue, please. My system okay. is slow, so I'm just trying to follow. Okay, no problem. Okay, so um, has everybody added their name? So we go to the next step. Just raise your hand if you have. Okay seven eight nine people okay um so the next thing we want to do is we've made the change so it doesn't just end there you have to there's something called adding in like git add is just telling telling git that hey i just changed this contributors.md file can you add this change for me so that's just what you are communicating to git so we're just going to run this command like i said just copy it and come here where is it and come to your command or your terminal and please, why can't I paste? Okay, allow paste. So just paste that command and click add. I just realized that the terminal is not really big enough. I should have used my monitor, but you, if you can see now we've added the change, right? Git add, has everybody done that? So the next step is to, the next step is to push, um, to, to commit rather, not to push, to commit our changes. So you just say git commit dash M in brackets. I added my name to the con add roots to contributor list. So you place this dash in your name to your own name. So just copy this command and I'm just going to edit it. Um, so let me just go edit that part. So if you're here, just let me know. So add roof. Okay, great. Some people are following. So click enter. So you see, we've added, we've told Git that they should, um, we've told Git that we committed, made a change, right? So the next thing is pushing your change. Is everybody with me? Okay. So the next command is pushing your change. So come here again and copy this command. For people that are far, far behind, you can practice this on your own data. So if you're far, far behind, you can just follow through with us that practicing and because the time is almost up. So you can practice this on your own. This is just like a practice session. Um, so yeah, so git push um, origin. Don't put your branch name. Remember what you named your branch. So don't make a mistake and just add your branch name. So you have to edit that part. Um, so this is pushing the change back to GitHub. So paste this and just, I, my own was root branch. I think that's what I named it. Root dash branch. Is everybody following? If you're following, just raise your hand. Okay. 
So yes, I have successfully pushed a branch and you said it will tell you create a pull request with that branch by visiting blah, 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 blah. So let's go back here. Um, so the next thing we want to do is creating a pull request, right? And like submitting our changes for review by creating a pull request. So if you come here and toggle to, you know, this is on the main branch. We go here to root branch, right? If you, you have to switch to the branch that you created it on. Does everybody um, or has everyone seen this or switched to their branch? You can see here. Okay, I think I think there are a lot of people that know how to use Git here. That's why people are three years ago. I can't do this fast, fast. <laughs> but yeah, um, okay. Hi, so, hi, Ruth. Yeah, you want to just paste the link on the chat once more. The contributions list. The the, yes. repo, the repository okay. list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me embed it. Um, okay, where's the charts? Okay. So sorry, we can't use the charts. Um, okay, I pasted it again. So hi meeting float controls. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so if you if you are on this spot, like if you have changed branch from main to that branch that you called, can you raise your hand? Let me see how many people are following. Five, seven, eight, okay, ten, okay, great. Um, so now click on compare and pull request. You see that pop up. Um, so you see it's creating a pull request for you. So say um, I just added, so you can just put the sentence. I just added my name to the contributor list. And this is something I have to say here um, is always describe what you, like when you send in a pull request, don't just send in like the, the title, always kind of like describe your change. It kind of helps the maintainers or people that are reviewing the request understand what it what it is you're contributing right so always try to describe your changes so if you can just do that who is at this creating pull request so you can just click on create pull request and okay. so yes um it will automatically merge it's automat automatically be added because they have like a bot this is a practice repository so they have like a bot that does the whole whose pull request has been merged. Yes. We got a conflict. You got a conflict? Oh, maybe you did something wrong. So no. sorry. Maybe something was wrong. You're having conflict at this early. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll love to see what happened. But who has the happy dance? <laughs> Okay, I have a happy dance. Oh, that's well, good. I'm, not <laughs> I'm, happy to, <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. So that's um this is um basically um uh, the flow. Although some in, in a more in a real life project, it is sometimes there are some hurdles, right? It's, it's not just it's not this seamless when you are making a real contribution, right? But um this is just basically how the flow works. We're using GitHub to contribute to open source, like how the flow works contributing to an open source project. And I hope a lot of people have been able to kind of like learn a lot about like open source contributions, how to contribute. Um, this this is a, these sessions, this series are going to be held monthly. We are going to do a lot of, a lot of them. Somebody's trying to say something. Um, yeah. I, I can barely hear you if I can just try and say something. But um, like I said, this is going to be monthly and we are going to do a, a follow up of different kind of series. I think we need one like using GitHub um, as well. Um, so just watch out for 
are and join our community follow us on twitter at chaos underscore africa for the people that successfully did it you can make a tweet and say that like, yeah and just you can just make a tweet and just say um i made my first tag us yeah tag us at chaos okay. africa for the people that successfully but you are still yet to do it you can still tag us when you're done right um but i'm i'm excited there are a lot of people that joined something people joined um, so I'm excited that you all joined the session. So I'll, I'll take, we'll take two questions um, because of the time we have. Um, we'll take like two questions. So you can go for it if you have a question. I'll be checking the Q&A. Okay, um, please, are we going to have the recording, please? Yes. Um, Although I'm very shy of this recording, but you're going to have it. And where, where should we expect the recording? Okay, it will be on our YouTube um on our youtube page maybe if you have it um like i i can we can tweet out we can tweet we'll tweet it out oh god it's going to be on twitter oh god okay tweet it out. we'll try our best <laughs> <laughs> okay is there does anyone have a question please drop the 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 twitter handle on the um Oh yes, um, at chaos Africa, at chaos underscore Africa, underscore Africa. Yeah, this is our handle, so you can tag us. Um, does anyone have um any question just before we wrap up? Oh, I see so many questions about being lost. I'm so sorry, I didn't check this. Um, but you can always follow through. You can drop questions in our Slack channel if you want to okay i guess i'm not saying should we delete the branch you can delete the branch yes okay somebody said they have a question not webinar related um Chitalu, you can ask a question just have like two more minutes so we end before we end okay hi i don't know if you can hear me now can you hear yeah, me now? sure yeah i can hear you now oh thank god hi good Good evening. Good evening, Good Ray evening. Blessing. Good evening, Ruth. Hi. No mind. You know, I, I did look up to you, my boss. So um the this thing, my question is I actually based on this one, not the village purchases you because your voice just dropped. <laughs> so they are really pursuing me. They are really pursuing me. I'm not even surprised by this. It's me at net FM. Seriously. Ah, God. God. Okay, okay, we can hear you now. So just be fast so that <laughs> they, will not, they will not come <laughs> and overwhelm me again. <laughs> okay, so I think that this is one of the projects. I think it's been starting. Oh. Yeah. I can't hear you. Uh, uh, I can't hear you. Sorry. Can you, you type write it? She should just type it out now. You should type it out. Yeah, you can type it out. I don't know why. It's, it's when you want to ask a question on that. It's just become low all of a sudden. Sorry, what command do we use to delete the branch on our local hmm. machine? And Google that. Oh, okay, okay. Just Google how to delete the branch. But I think it's hmm, let me not because this <laughs> or I don't want to <laughs> I don't I don't want to further embarrass myself. Let me go to it. Yeah, in the UI, you can click delete branch and it deletes it directly. Yeah, that's true. True. We have, we have Git. Um, yeah. Git. Okay, so um, we are going to about to end the session now. Um, thank you everybody for joining up to 60 people. So I'm really excited that you got yeah. to know what this is about and watch out for the next one. Um, all right, so bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, Rhodes. Uh, bye. bye. All right. Thank you, Rhodes. Bye, everyone.